Good morning and happy Easter. Please stand and sing this first one with us. y'all to be seated tell you a couple things if you don't come to church very often you came to our church today we're so grateful that you did it's like walking in the gym you don't know how this machine works you don't want to look dumb in front of anybody don't worry about it every single thing is on the screen we'll just make fun of you a little bit and then we'll move on do the next thing they do it to me all the time i'm here all the time um Everything that we do will be on our screen. If you have a child that's singing, it's going to be on the video. It's going to be on the website. Make sure that you have a bulletin. You don't need it much for this service, but you need it for things that are going on throughout the week. So make sure you get one at least on the way out. Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this amazing day. For the miracle that launched this movement that has come all the way to Greer in 2019. It's taken a great deal for all of us to get here, to prepare for this day, and we ask that all of our preparations go to your purpose, your message, your hope for us for this day. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen.
If y'all will stand and greet one another and make sure everyone feels welcome here at Memorial. You want a chair? this off on your dress. On your dress. Good morning. I want to welcome you to Memorial United Methodist. My name is Joe Cade. I'm the pastor here. We're so grateful that you joined us in worship today. Our restrooms are right over there. This is a water fountain and we have coffee and donuts or what's left of them back there. We have a security check-in station in the back if you have um, K through five children that you will send to Sunday school. We want to make sure that um, every, we follow every procedure with them so they feel safe on our campus. Um, if you need anything, just uh, any one of our people in the back that's standing up can help you do that. I want you to turn in your bulletin uh, to a couple things so I can make sure that you know it. Uh, it would open this way. We have um, Easter lilies in both worship services today and the people in their honor and in memory of. And if you gave one, you are welcome to take one. And in fact, um, if you um, end up going to the 11 o'clock service as well, there are a fair number of people that don't take them all. If you see that there are some and you would like to take one, we love for people to take them home. Um, but definitely see that if you gave one. If you open your bulletin, you see our five practices of fruitful congregations. These are um, principles that we try to live by of hospitality, worship, faith development, mission and service, and generosity. I want to point out a couple. Um, we don't have children, youth, or adult uh, programming tonight. That comes back um, full swing next week, and you see the new series uh, taught by um, Kathy Tamanko coming up. Um, a new newsletter has been out for a couple weeks, and a new one will come out with all kinds of great pictures from today. Um, we have a backdrop on all um, significant Sundays like this um, that has a great place for you to take a picture, like you're at... Um, uh, the ice cream store right over here has a great backdrop. Uh, we hope that you'll take that picture in the social hall between here and the sanctuary. Just follow people as they're going that way and um, post it on social media. We'll um, promote uh, some of the fun stuff that we're doing here in the church. Um, there's a concert, uh, if you love music, coming up this Saturday in the sanctuary. Make sure that um, you're aware of that, that anyone you know in the community that loves music is aware of that. Um, the admission is free. They'll take a donation to support what they do. And they'll also be looking for people that are interested in participating in that choir. Apparently, they have a great time in the men's choir. And items for Redbird Mission, the group that um, goes forth from here to Kentucky uh, to be in mission for a week. Uh, we'll be collecting them in the very near future. And uh, you'll see those lists in your Sunday school classes. If you think, you know, I can't go up there, but I want to help. I want to do something. You can bring those items, um, help them. And uh, you can donate to their trip as well. Just make sure that you note it um, very carefully in your gift. Um, you can give electronically with instructions in the bulletin. You see them there. And I think uh, that's all we need to say about all that. Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, we have read very difficult texts for a long time this spring. The story of your son's commitment to going to Jerusalem, no matter the cost. And as people sat on Friday and watched his judgment and crucifixion, as they wandered on Saturday, numb, wondering what they were going to do, what they had done, what the future was going to hold, and as they woke up this morning with the empty tomb and tried to understand what in the world that meant, we pray, Lord, that you will help us understand all the emotions of this weekend, that as we read this story, we can understand its purpose not only for that day, for today, and that you'll inspire us as we pray the prayer your son taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
our opening phrase today is season finale. And you can always, in either worship service, fill out in the blanks if you like to um, be doing something as you're participating in the service like I would. Um, you can write in the blanks under the passionate worship section. Series finale. People have put a lot of time and effort into whatever this drama is, whatever this comedy is, the people who created it, science fiction. And then there's the people who have dedicated their time to watching it and their energy and their love have deeply connected with those people. But there's a time when every show ends and there's these questions of what in the world is going to be resolved, what in the world is going to be left hanging. And those lead to monster numbers in terms of people watching on television. I've got the top five shows all time on television in terms of season finale numbers. Let's, uh, let's look at the first one. MASH had 105.9 million. Let's play this game. I know people, all right, you're going to make me do something. I'm not going to make you stand up in front of the crowd and dance. I'm not going to make you do team building exercises. All I'm going to make you do is just raise your hand. That's it. If you watched the MASH finale, raise your hand. That's interesting. What do y'all think is next? Think Dallas is next? Friends? Seinfeld? Next one. Cheers. Uh, I feel like family feud. Good answer. Uh, 84.4 million people watched the end of Cheers. And you go through these strange highs and lows. Sometimes the story gets a little sideways and you go, what in the world? How did we get here? Why did this person leave? Why did this person come back? Why did they add this cast member? Whatever it is, you're tuning in for the uh, uh, series finale. How many of y'all watched the Cheers series finale? So that's not near as many. What do y'all think's next? I think Seinfeld's next. Anybody else? Any other guesses? Let's look and see. Seinfeld, 76.3 million people watched the series finale of Seinfeld. Now, we're getting to the place where we're starting to have, um, what was the very first DVR? What was that called? TiVo. We're getting to the place where we've got TiVo, so if you couldn't see it live, you could see it at another point. How many of you watched the series finale of Seinfeld? It's the first one I watched, the series finale, okay? What do y'all think is next? Friends is your guess on what's next. Let's see. Friends, 65.9 million. We've dropped 35, uh, almost 40 million people from the first one to the fourth one. If I gave you each 100 guesses, I bet you would not guess what's fifth on the list. Anybody want to take a guess? Knowing that, you want to guess what's fifth on the list. It's not the one you're thinking. Okay? So to think one, drop it. Think of the next one. What's that? All in the family. That was in the top ten. Any other guesses? The office is an excellent guess. No. Happy days. Uh, Steve Urkel. I can't, uh, I can't remember. <laughs> Hit the next one. What? <laughs> now, here's what I know. Y'all gonna argue about this at lunch? You gonna Google it? And there may be some other new thing that's out and you go, no, this was the one. Okay, fine. But the list I saw, Magnum PI? 50 million, now that's half. Sometimes it took those strange turns Sometimes it got to a place that you didn't believe. Sometimes you walked away and said, I'm never coming back. I did that with Lost. I've done that with a couple current shows. And then you come back, and sometimes you don't come back. This drama in this story, told live, was insane. It brought a lot of strange characters in. It brought a lot of strange uh, plot lines in. Especially at the end when he's tried and crucified and now is not there in the tomb. This series finale in chapter 28 of Matthew is truly insane. Verse 1. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. 
there was a violent earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. So your next phrase is a new chapter. Now until I went to Israel, I had this totally ignorant thought of a rock that was shaped like a Hershey kiss or some kind of massive thing that no one on earth could move. Well, it was more like a rolling wheel in a track because otherwise no one else could go there. You know, if it's the family burial site, not only could we have gotten that rock there, we could never move it. You're talking about a track like your um, sliding glass door with a rather large wheel that rolls in and out in front of the door as a protection. It's not there. So the commitment that you have to the proper burial rites of that person has been extremely violated if you're these people. Because the sun going down on Friday means everything, everything, everything. You cannot do anything on the Sabbath as according to your devotion to God. So it was so rushed, we didn't know where we would place him. We put him in this friend's place. We closed the door, we cried like babies, we ran out of there because we feared for our lives. We sat numb on Saturday. But there are things that you do that provide closure in moments of death. Now I've been there many, many times in many, many different ways in many, many different locations as people tried to get closure for this person that they lost. Not once in 19 years has there been a threat that someone was going to harm you as you did it. Not once has there been a time limitation that we've only got three more minutes and we've got about an hour's worth of stuff to do. Mostly because cemeteries won't allow you near them if you're not two hours away from the sun going down. That's caused some stress for people. But there's never been a moment in my life where this has happened and we've had the fear of what somebody else would do. Now, you could, do you remember the beginning of Godfather 2? When they were trying to pay respects? And someone is literally trying to harm them, trying to end them. These people go to this tomb to pay their last respects and get closure. And the front door is open. How would you feel if you came back to your house and the front door was wide open? What would come to mind of what was in that house? How long has it been? It's been open, potentially, for 24, 30 hours. Your front door. You think about your loved one. You think about the violent way that they got after him. You think about what they could have done in these 30 hours. And your heart just sinks until there's an angel top thing angels love to say in the gospels is what? Oh man. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of this lightning strike feeling. A couple feet from you. Don't be afraid that this door is open. Don't be afraid for your life as everyone around here did what they did to the person that you love. Don't be afraid. Well I tell you who is afraid that has not been afraid to this point is Roman soldiers. Roman soldiers have been good up to this point. You know why? We've got the spears, brother. We've got the numbers. We've got the money. We've got the power. People who are in this moment standing with that spear are now, for once, in this moment, afraid. So even if those women are afraid, at least we're on the level playing field for the first time in a long, long time in Jerusalem. So he says uh, that we, we've got a new chapter. Eleven chapters ago, Jesus was shown to be the most significant person in the transfiguration on the mountain. People, um, uh, you know, when you see Star Wars and Luke sees those people who have been the people before him and they bless him, that's completely stolen from a chapter in the Gospels. 
where um, Elijah and Moses and God are there blessing Jesus' journey. Eleven chapters ago, that happened. And for eleven chapters, there has been serious pain. From the moment he said who he was to them, there's been serious pain since they came down the mountain. Since then, he's predicted his death. He's told really harsh parables about the pain of human life. He's wrecked the systems of the temple that created a lot of money for the people. And he's been prosecuted and crucified. But now we're in the new chapter, which is the last chapter, 28. And it's a totally new deal. Verse 5 says, the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He's not here. He's risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So your next phrase is an old location. First we had a new chapter. Now we have an old location. Galilee meant everything to these people. You think about the most special time in your family or the most special time in your career. The time in your life when everything clicked and you had momentum just through the roof. You're thinking about these people in Galilee. If you didn't want to go to the big city in the first place, kind of like the country, kind of like the lake, and you were forced to go to the big city, and then what happened happened in the big city, and somebody says, you want to go back to the lake where we all know everybody? You want to go back to the lake where all that happened? Um, yeah, yeah, I want to go back to the lake. He says, go back to Galilee because that's where he is, and he'll meet you there. He'll do what? I mean, I want to go back to Galilee, and I believe in being there, but I don't know that I believe he's going to meet me there. That doesn't sound right. That doesn't feel right. It's a little weird for you to say that. And did you notice there's a little dig in there from an angel to followers of Jesus that parents give their children, that spouses give their spouse? You know, kind of like I told you. You know, like he told you. He told you this was going to happen. There's times when somebody gives you really detailed instructions and those instructions really matter. You sort of pay attention. Or they seem so complicated, you feel like you can't hang in there and actually execute them, so you kind of give up on them mid-instruction. When Jesus predicts his death, he says, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. They're going to try me for who I am. I'm going to be crucified. And after three days, I'll be risen. they weren't listening to him. They were talking to each other like any group that you've ever tried to talk to about something important. They're talking to each other. You say, hey, did you hear what I said back there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, don't call on me. Yeah, I was definitely listening, but don't call on me. He says, like he told you, he's going to be in Galilee. He's going to be there. He's going to meet you. So number one, not only is the old location Galilee, there was going to be this site where our Messiah was buried and we would go to this place and honor his memory like, um, obviously more magnified, but like when we visit famous, famous people's graves. That was going to be the place and it's why they wanted to prepare it, but now that place is an old site. It's no longer the place where he's buried and it simply becomes a place where people on pilgrimages visit where he was very temporarily. So we're going back to the old side of Galilee and this tomb even. Old news. It's not significant. Verse 8 says, So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. He <laughs> closed the refrigerator door and there's somebody standing there. <laughs> That's my whole life. <laughs> Greetings. Ah! 
They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and go to Galilee. There they will see me. A new chapter. Going to an old location. And finally, a blessed greeting. And if this were a series finale, you'd be like, whoa. I didn't see that one coming. There were little hints all along the way as we were watching the show. There were little things that they said, little things that they did, little things that they handed out, but I, you know, I didn't know. I was looking at my phone when I was watching the show. I missed some key moments every once in a while. Spouse yelled at me for looking at my phone when we were in this really important moment of watching this television show. But now it all makes what? It all makes sense. You got a last piece of the puzzle. This is a blessed greeting. A blessed greeting after potentially the harshest wake-up call they've ever had. You think they slept that night? You think they slept the night before? These women knew what they were going to do. They were going to recognize and finally commit themselves to the fact that this man was gone. And they were deeply committed to giving him the last rites that are critical to their faith. You think about the times that you've done that in the church, it was a hard thing, but you knew that you had to do it. Times that you did it for family, this is going to be a really hard thing to stand up here and speak for this person, but I'm going to do it means to them and what it means to me. Okay, we're not doing any of that. It's empty. We're going to Galilee. And now these women are going to do a new thing with no idea what it means. So here's your final question. What do I fear? Would it be more frightening to you that he was crucified and is gone? Or would it be more frightening to you that he was resurrected and he's still here? Would it be more frightening to you that this movement is gone and it meant everything to me? Or more frightening to you that, whoa, this has now been handed over to me. This message is in my hands. This purpose is in my hands. It's gone far beyond Galilee and is in the upstate of South Carolina and all over the world. What do I fear? If this is the case, and you believe it, and there's so much love and purpose and hope to it, what do you fear? That's the question you can ask yourself this week as we celebrate this incredible holy mystery. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you'll stand as you're able. We affirm our faith with this modern affirmation. And you're welcome to join us and um, participate. You're welcome to simply listen. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of God fulfilled. We believe in the Holy Spirit as a divine presence in our lives, reminding us always of the truth of Christ, our inspiration and strength in times of joy and sorrow. We believe our faith should be apparent in our words of love and acts of service that the kingdom of God may be a present reality here on earth. You may be seated. It's Easter, so Lent is over, so I can use sports references again, okay? There are people that are solid that pitch every day. That's our band. There are people in the bullpen that can throw 110 miles an hour. That's Larry Smith. Larry Smith coming out of the bullpen to sing our um, offering song. And I ask that y'all welcome him to participate in the service.
the um, plate is going to go by. You know, we're still learning with these sections. We're still learning. Just give it to the part in front of you if you see that those people have not given it. And if you go across the lines, you can give as the plate goes by. You can give electronically in the bulletin. We know that it takes a little while to be ready to give. We appreciate that. But when you are, we'll be grateful to receive it. Come ye sinners, poor and needy, weak and wounded, sick and sore. Jesus ready stands to save you, full of pity, love and power. and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in His arms, in the arms of my dear Savior. Oh, there are ten thousand charms. We also want to welcome Chad Fernander, uh, who's the son of Ernesta Fernander, who leads our um, choir in the 11 a.m. worship service um, on the bass in the band. Please stand and sing this last one with us. How 
sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Go forth in peace and understanding with great passion and purpose as an instrument of God's peace. May the love of Christ go with you. May the power of the Holy Spirit go with you. May the overwhelming mercy and justice of God go with you. Amen. Have a great week.